was alive when God took Elijah away from Elisha. Remember the prophets of uh, uh, came and said, hey, 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 he's going to be taken away today. Huh? Just, just, Now, I know he needs to be there. He knows that. But don't you think there's a sense of loss there as well? This is the man who he has learned at, that he wants to be like, Give me more information. How many of you wish you had one more day to sit down with your grandma and grandpa and fortune here for wisdom? You know, he's going to be facing some big, big things. And there's not going to be Elijah there. And so, what's it going to be like without a teacher this confidence? Who would be there uh, to give him guidance? Wait, he's kind of my safety net. When I fall, I know we'll be there. The safety net's gone. But Elijah begin, Elisha begins to realize that he doesn't need Elijah. That God will catch him. That he can rely upon God and worry about what to do. And he can confide in God to be his master and to be his teacher. And that... Uh, even though Elijah is gone, he would never lose Elijah's example. Because it was him. And so God said, listen, I'm going to take him away. But I'm making room for growth and to multiply you. That's interesting to me. Elijah, Elisha realized that his double portion came from God. God grew in his life. Let's talk about this for a minute. I see the time. I want to hear what you have to say. But I'm still trying to lay some, some answers for you. This will be the last example of the practice keepers for a moment. But probably one of the other stories of the Word of God that really out to me and is familiar to us about loss and God working in the loss, what it does is the book of God. So let's talk about for a moment. I know we're familiar. Well, let's rehearse in our ears. Let's, let's see if there's some things that, that maybe will be new to our mind. So there's a famine. Elimelech is in the land of, uh, of, of Bethlehem, Judah. Uh, Bethlehem there. The house of bread. And Elimelech and his wife, Naomi, and their two sons are facing famine. And so in the middle of famine, Elimelech feels that the better thing for him to do is to move to Moab. Now, there's a lot that can be preached and said here when we preached on this. But I'm just looking at the fact of the Doug that there's a lot more Moab right now. And so he's thinking of the interest of his family. He's thinking of the interest of his sons. And they moved down to Moab, Brother Justin, because he wants. Now, they're very blessed. A wife and two sons. What a wonderful family unit they have. And so they move down to Moab, and things are going well, and his sons grow, and they take wives. We know that their wives are, 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 are uh, Orpha and Ruth, and so things are going very well. But in the course of time, in this plant, place called Moab, we find that uh, really Naomi learns that the road to Moab was nothing more than a death march for her, because she loses her husband, she loses her two sons, and really it becomes a land of funerals for her, where everything was plentiful now. It's very empty for her. I look at some folks and I see, you know, they, they have stories similar to this. And, and so uh, her two sons are gone, and all that she's left with is two Moabitess daughter-in-laws, um, Ruth and Orpha. And uh, really, what she had now she's left with something that is much worse. Because she has two Moabites daughter-in-laws. Not really probably what she wanted or thought was going to be her life. You know, that wasn't where she was raised. That wasn't her home. That wasn't her heart. But they went there because of a family. And so here she is. Um, I would say, let, let's be transparent. I would say that possibly, and I'm not saying for sure, but I would say possibly Naomi just probably would thought, I'd just rather die in this land too. 
brother. I've heard people that have lost children say it's the worst thing in the world. I just read that. She loses her husband, she loses her two sons, and she's left with two more bodies. Daughter moms. Listen, she was probably hoping too that the Messiah would come from her line. You know, that was what every Jewish girl wanted, right? I know it's some years before. And so her hopes have been taken away, her future collapses, her destiny seems to be destroyed, and surely God's hand is against her. And then she begins to see this little glimmer of hope. She says, I've heard that Yahweh, I've heard that Yahweh is working and moving in the land of Bethlehem. And so we're going to go back there. I want you to think about this. Let's think very, very clearly. I know we like to make stories, fantasies, and wonderful and nice. But she probably doesn't want to take two Moabite girls back to Bethlehem. Really, she probably doesn't. For many reasons. I know we're thinking, because she tells them, I can't have any more sons, you don't want to wait on them. Well, let's just think. There's a stigma that's going to be with that. I'd rather not have the stigma. And so she says to them, listen girls, stay here. Stay here. Find yourself a husband. Marry among your own people. You know, you dress different. You're, you're really different. Return home. Uh, you wouldn't want to come with me. Uh, I'm too old to marry. I'm going to have sons for you. I lost everything. And what has happened is very bitter for me. And I know it's bitter for you. Let's go our separate ways. You're young. And you would be much happier staying right here with your old people. Really, I think logic tells us that. That's probably the story. And so Orpha, what does she do? She gives her mommy a long kiss. She loves her mama. And she probably does feel bad too. She suffered a loss. And so, you know, sometimes it's hard to, because this loss is from a husband, but her loss is from her son. She lost two sons. She lost a husband. You know, dealing with grief, it's crazy. You know, emotions everywhere. And so the Bible says that Ruth says, hey, hey, don't you urge me to leave you? Because I'm not. How you doing? Where you go, I'm going. And where your people is, it's going to be my people. And where you lodge, it's going to be where I lodge. Your God, that's going to be my God. Where you die, that's where I'm going to die. And so, um, we find that through this, Naomi has the steadfast love of a Moabite girl. But she suffered loss. But really, they only used the steadfast love of this Moabite girl. So they begin to make their way back to Bethlehem. And coming down the road, people didn't hurt but ebbs and creases of her face, the wrinkles. Hidden inside of there was a lot of bitterness over what happened with her. Her back is probably stooped and bent down. I mean, her appearance is so different, she don't even look like the same woman for the just one. And so, as she comes back, um, she knows that the woman with her how is she going to be accepted? She's not dressed as an Israelite. Her clothes say that she's somewhat different. You know, the questions begin to have, uh, ask, what happened to your husband? What happened to your sons? She has to give the answers. She says, please, don't call me Naomi anymore. That means pleasant. I'm anything but pleasant. But call me Mara. I'm bitter. I'm bitter. I'm bitter in my soul. I'm bitter in my heart. My, my life is just really marked by bitterness. I went away full and the Lord has brought me back very empty. And so uh, they come into this home that hasn't been lived in for years. And can you imagine what that's like? The lapidated. So there are two women trying to do their best to clean it up. And she's looking out at the land that the women like own. And I mean, it's just, it's just, it's hard. It's, it's, it's not broken up. It's really not anywhere near where it should be to uh, have things planned. Planted. And so she, 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 she just looks and she says, uh, I don't know what to do. And Ruth says, wait a second. I will just stay here. I will go and I will glean in the neighbor's field. And so uh, 
That's what Ruth does. She goes, and Brother Justin, she leaves in the morning, and she's happy. She comes home, and she smiles. She has a bag full of food, and it's wonderful. And all of a sudden, she hears about this Boaz, and she wonders, I, I wonder if he would be willing to be a, a near kinsman redeemer for, for a living. No, he would never want to. He would never want to mire his bloodline. He, how could I think that? And so as time goes by, she realizes that he is. So we know the story. That Boaz and Ruth gets married. And they have a son named Obed. Obed will then give us birth to a son named Jesse, who will be the father of David, who will be the lineage of Jesus Christ. So Obed becomes so special to Naomi that is said of her, that is said to Naomi, he's better than. But God, He would have never been. He would have never been if I did not have room to allow you to take away so that the second could be even better than the first. But the second is established. Listen, it may not mean that we may not miss people or we may not miss things, but it's a realization that those seasons and those times are over and you, we can wallow around in our grief and our agony and our bitterness, but there comes a point where even though it's ebbed on our face and it's bent our back over, there comes a point where we have to realize not what we don't have, but what we do have and allow God to grow that and multiply it and say, Lord, the second is so great. Thank you. Even though it's difficult to let go of the first, the second is great. I love you. Now let me just close with saying this. The whole thing that the writer of Hebrews is saying is, you see, there was a time when there were sacrifices that were spent and they were burnt. But that's all. Because God sent forth His own Son born of a But it's also 
as we see people lose things, knowing that it's an opportunity. Oh, well, I go up with Justin, you just lost everything. Oh, you're hopeless, you have no hope. But I come up and say, oh, it's going to be all better. That's going to be. No, I, I need to be a lending ear, an active listening ear, out because it's a process. You're going to be let the end of the process show that God that is and is only made for the seven. I'm done. I'm sorry I'm taking so long, but I want to hear some things from you. What do you think? Oh, you guys are all in that place where the vault's shut and the dial is rusted and stuck on blessing. Wonderful. Wonderful. I can't be. Yeah. I don't have anything Right. He made room for things that he never had before. Praise the Lord, brother. You're a good man, brother.
But I remember we were out of town and we burned so many candles. I found this little cross. And God gave my dad this verse, Psalm 50, verse 23. Who so offered praise glorified me. And to him it ordered this conversation aright. But I show the salvation of God. And so he would say that verse over and over again whenever my sister and I would start complaining. You know, he blasts this, you know. We just got that, you know, and that's something we grew in. And he would say, you know, the order of the conversation arrived. God will give you something so much better because you will be honoring him. You glorify him. And I remember on purpose, intentionally, not saying what I thought. Because I knew that God's word was true. And he did restore so much. We got all community put together. Red Cross came in and everything. And things worked out so much better. And the following year, we had the best God in the And I That's good. So when I hear our sister Rachel's dad, the vision he had of safety. Yeah, I'll just be honest. I would have been upstairs. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm serious. But only the peace of God established that was horrible. remain encouraged. When you hear people talk about, you know, God being a God of prosperity. I'll follow that. But in violence, he takes my way through. Let him understand. When people say about oh, God, I'm not caring, I'm not caring. Oh my God, you're missing out. Amen. Thank you for being here. Let's stand tonight. Appreciate your presence, the Lord. Appreciate you ever again. Amen. I love Bible study. It's good for me. Pray that I bless you. Go to that close to prayer.